three new roller coasters coming in 2025 were just recently announced. And I'm going to be telling you everything you need to know about these three coasters and whether or not these are actually good additions for their respective parks. We have quite a lot to cover, so let's get started. The first coaster we are going to be talking about is Wrath of Rakshasa, a brand new for 2025 b dive coaster that is coming to Six Flags Great America. This coaster stands 180 feet tall, reaches a top speed of 67 miles per hour, features over 3,000 feet of track, and has the steepest draw on any B&M dive coaster at 96 degrees. And will also feature 5 different inversions, the most on any other B&M dive coaster. While not the tallest or the fastest dive coaster out there, I must say it does break 2 legit world records. Not the like 15 world records Valraven breaks at Cedar Point. But anyway, this dive coaster layout actually looks pretty good. And I must say, I'm actually pretty impressed and was surprised at how good this coaster really looks. And I do think this will be one of the better dive coasters out there. Now obviously, I am a little bit concerned with this coaster being a little rough. Beanham's last few dive coasters have been on the rougher end, and I do not know if this coaster is going to be the same way. And there's a good chance that this coaster is definitely on the rougher end. Now of course, we don't know anything yet, but just... Judging from how rough Iron Menace was, that it's like the same train and same like model, I am a little bit worried. But anyway, is this a good addition to Six Flags Great America? Well the answer is a resounding yes. Six Flags Great America really needed a coaster like this. A relatively high capacity coaster that would really bring in the crowds and be a very popular coaster at the park. I mean think, you walk up to this coaster and, th and see this massive beyond vertical drop like it makes you really want to ride it the bottom line is this coaster is going to be extremely popular at six flags great america it looks cool and is really going to bring the crowds and is also an incredibly good addition to six flags great america and as a side note a bonus to this is that it will have three trains meaning they should hopefully be able to operate this relatively efficiently that is of course if they decide to run all three trains a majority of the time but of course we'll have to wait and see if that's actually going to be the case anyway great addition and I'm really excited to hear the reviews once people finally get to ride this in 2025 all right Rathorok Shasa is a really cool and coaster and good addition to Six Flags Great America but what's even better than that is that Lost Island is adding an RMC Raptor yeah I Bet you didn't see that one coming. So Fire Runner is the brand new RMC Raptor that's going to be opening up at Lost Island Theme Park in 2025. This coaster will feature the exact same layout as Stump, Stump Pilot, the coaster I am showing you right at this very moment. It'll have a little under 2,000 feet of track, reach a top speed of 52 miles per hour, feature three inversions, and will stand a little over 100 feet tall. It's an RMC Raptor. It's going to be intense. It's going to be a good ride. And hopefully RMC has resolved some of the issues that these coasters had previously. Given the name Fire Runner, I assume it will be themed to like the fire area of Lost Island. Knowing how good of a job Lost Island does with their theming, hopefully it should be a well-themed attraction. And hopefully it can create some sort of um like backstory that they can incorporate to the queue and the ride experience. And hopefully it's going to be a really cool just in general experience when you ride this coaster. Something interesting to note about this coaster is that it'll feature two trains with 12 passengers each, instead of three separate trains with eight passengers each. Stone Pilot did something similar to this, where it had two trains with 10 passengers each, but this is the first time that I'm aware of that we are seeing two 12 passenger trains. Hopefully this should help capacity a little bit. I mean, it is Lost Island, and Lost Island is not the busiest theme park out there. In fact, it is pretty empty most of the time. And it is still a smaller scale park, so hopefully capacity should not be an issue with this coaster. It's definitely not the highest capacity attraction out there, but the line shouldn't move horribly slow as long as they run both trains. But here's the real question. Is this really the right addition for Lost Island? And this might be a bit of a hot take here, but I'm gonna say no, actually. I personally think, now don't get me wrong, I'm really glad we got a Raptor, and a Raptor is a better coaster than the one I'm about to tell you, but I'm not sure if the Raptor's really the right fit. And I honestly think Lost Island probably should have built an RMC Wild Moose. Now hear me out on this one. Lost Island doesn't really have a true family coaster. You go from a Wacky Worm to Montugani, a thrill coaster with like ejector airtime and all that. That's pretty intense. 
and this RNC Raptor is going to be very intense. There's just not a family coaster to bridge the gap between the kiddie coasters and the really intense massive thrill coasters. And I honestly think this was a bit of a missed opportunity here to really fill Lost Island's biggest gap in their lineup. They already had a headlining like big thrill attraction in Montugani, but they needed a family coaster. And with Lost Island being a smaller park, the investment cycle is a little longer than these bigger parks. They are going to have to wait a couple of years to get a family coaster. They can't just turn around a year or two later and be like, yep, we can build another $10 million family coaster. Like, they can't do that. They do not have the money for that. All right, here's the bottom line. Am I happy and glad they have a Raptor because that's a better coaster? Yes, I am. And I still feel like this should be a pretty good success for the park. But when you look at Los Angeles Coaster lineup, was the RMC Wild Moose a better option? And I'm going to say yes. I know it sounds a little strange a coaster enthusiast saying, yeah, they should have built the smaller family coaster than the bigger thrill coaster. But when you take a step back and look at the coaster lineup without any like biases or whatever, it does make sense. Oh, and if you're enjoying the video so far, then a sub to the channel would be fantastic. Now, those first two coasters were great. They were important. They're going to be super helpful to their respective parks. But this third edition does way more than just make their park a better park. Because this last coaster that's coming to Six Flags New England in 2025 is way more important than you think. Because it is opening the door for one of the best coaster manufacturers to start building roller coasters again for Six Flags. And that is Intamin. And Intamin is the manufacturer of Quantum Accelerator, the brand new Intamin family straddle coaster coming to Six Flags New England. Now you're watching the POV right now, it looks it looks pretty good. It is still a family coaster, but you have a pretty tall top hat, you've got some nice twists and turns, and I think it is going to be a good coaster and good addition to Six Flags New England. But there's something a lot more important we have to talk about. This coaster is built by Intamin, and Cedar Fair really does not like Intamin. And so when Cedar Fair and Six Flags merged, we were all worried that they would refuse to work with Intamin. But this is showing us that this new company, Six Flags, is ready to work with Intamin again. And that is really good news for us, because Intamin makes some of the best roller coasters in the world. Think Velocicoaster, that coaster is incredible and one of the best coasters I've ever ridden in my life. And it was built by, you guessed it, Intamin. I'm not going to go super in depth on this because I am going to make a whole separate video about how this is super important for Intamin and all the Six Flags parks because this is just so important it deserves its own video. So if you don't want to miss that, make sure you're subscribed. Alright, the bottom line for Quantum Accelerate is it's a really good looking family coaster. It's going to be pretty unique, it'll offer a good ride experience for people of all ages, families, older people, kids, everyone is going to enjoy this coaster. And it looks like it's filling a massive hole in the center of the park, and it will just help complete Six Flags New England's coaster collection, make it a little more well-rounded and balanced, and make Six Flags New England a better park overall. And it looks like they might even try to be decently theme this, which would be great. Anyway, great addition to Six Flags New England, but most importantly, this is built by Intimate. That video is coming soon. Make sure to check it out when it does come out. Because these next few years with Six Flags plus Intamin could get really interesting. And result in a lot of really good coasters. Alright, that's our breakdown of all of the latest additions coming in 2025. And I'm super excited to see how good these coasters are actually going to be when people get to ride these. And I'm looking forward to hopefully ride some of these myself one day. Now Six Flags working with Intamin is super important. But why did they not like them before? What was going on? Well, check out the video on your screen right now if you want to know why. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you all in the next one.